Well, seven years ago today, 34 mine workers were killed when police opened fire with automatic weapons at Lomond's Platinum Mine in Marikana in the northwest. Ten people, including two policemen and two Lomond security guards, had been killed the previous week. They had gathered for that strike, demanding a minimum salary of 12,500 rand a month. The Farlem Commission, subsequently headed by retired Judge Ian Farlem, investigated it highlighted poor leadership from the police as one of the main reasons that led to police opening fire. The recommendations, including an inquiry into the fitness to hold office of the suspended National Police Commissioner, the NPA, to investigate several incidents where police may have exceeded the bounds of defence in shooting the strikers. A panel of experts was also appointed to help the police improve training and ensure that automatic weapons were not used. It presented to the Minister of Police in April last year, but it seems that little has been done. Not a single police officer has been prosecuted for the deaths. Compensation due to the families yet to be finalised. Lonman Mining Firm has been bought out by Subanya Stillwater. Wage negotiations, as we were saying earlier, are underway with AMCU warning it may strike again. Retired Judge Ian Farlam joins us now on the line. And Judge, thank you for being with us. Uh, you've been saying that if your recommendations, the recommendations of the Farlam Commission had been implemented, you have no doubt there would have been prosecutions by now. Just tell us more. Yeah, well, the, I don't know the reason for the delay. The, we recommended that the DPP appoint a panel to investigate to get admissible evidence. A lot of the evidence given to our commission couldn't be used in a criminal trial against the people who gave evidence. So we said appoint a panel, decided that the chairman of a senior state advocate get your own evidence which would be admissible and then decide whether to prosecute. We, uh, that was how many years ago? Uh, that was in, in, in 2015 that we made that recommendation. I understand the panel was appointed under, under with the chairmanship of uh, Dr. Victorious, but, after, but since then we've heard, we've heard nothing. Um, it's an extraordinarily long period of time. There was a suggestion that I heard that they had difficulty getting funding. Um, for, for the work. I don't know whether that's still the case or whether they received funding since. Uh, one doesn't know what the reason for the delay is, but certainly, prima facie, it, it, it's totally unacceptable. The, the problem has been hanging around for a long time. It's very important that we get closure, and as much as it's clear that criminal offences were committed by, by some members of the police force, it's important that, that those matters be be brought before the court uh, timelessly, as I say, so that clarity can be obtained and this, this whole matter can be put to bed in, in a proper way. And, and presumably you have no further powers uh, to check in with the NPA why there have been no prosecutions, no, no. to check in with the police why the, the experts no. are saying they, they made recommendations no. in April but nothing has been done. No, I, I, I have no information on, on that matter. And of course, I, I, I'm not entitled to it. Uh, you know, I, we, my colleagues and I did our job, and, and that's it. But the public is entitled to know why these recommendations have, have not been implemented at this stage. If there's a good reason, we must be told. And if there isn't a good reason, then then get on with it. And the indictments must be drawn, and the, the, the relevant accused must be brought before the court. Yeah. Uh, Judge, the, the ball was in your court to investigate when the Farlem Commission was underway. Uh, to many South Africans, it does seem like you threw that ball on. Instead of anything uh, definitive coming out, you, you called for more investigations by the National Prosecuting yeah. Authority. Oh, that, you that you didn't, let me finish, Judge, you didn't fully That's pronounce on the police commissioner. You called for a commission of inquiry. My question is, could you not have gone further to give investigators more to work with looking back? Well, uh, I, I don't think so. The, f f let me tell you firstly, the, we had an enormous amount of issues to investigate. It was taking a very long time. We, it would have taken substantially longer if, if we'd gone on. But in any event, we were given the power to refer certain questions to other bodies to investigate. And it seemed to us to be sensible to, to, to handle the, the, this particular aspect the way we did. Um, and refer it to the DPPs, as I said, so he can appoint a body to uh, collect evidence which will be admissible in court, upon which the decision to prosecute could be taken. Um, the main facts as to what happened were clearly set out in our report. Um, the, one of the problems we had in relation to individual policemen was that our five 
is a very interesting kind of rifle because the, the bullets it, it fires disintegrate on, on hitting, hitting the target. So it wasn't possible to link any, any policeman with any deceased. The, some of the police, had, certainly at C1, had acted in the reasonable belief that they were being attacked. This, this is a fi- finding that we made. Uh, some of them clearly went beyond that. So they exceeded the bounds of self-defense. But whether the people who were killed were killed by people who exceeded the bounds of self-defense or were killed by people who were within the bounds of self-defense, it was impossible to ascertain because one doesn't know, as I said, who shot whom. So that is certainly the case as far as, far as the, the C1 was concerned. But the, the, the main aspect of the case was the version that was put up by the police as to why they acted the way they did, whether the plan that they were implementing was a well-thought-out plan. In respect of that, they put up a, a version which was untrue. And it took our, investi- our evidence leaders a long time to get to the true facts and to, to expose that the version put up by the police it was, in material respects, untrue. All right, let's, let's start with the police officers themselves. Uh, th- there's been so, subsequent... Sorry, sorry, I think before, 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 sure. before you go on, uh, 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 I must deal with your other point about, uh, about the National Commissioner and the Provincial Commissioner. We, where we, we did suggest that a board of inquiry be appointed. Now, it must be understood that that was necessary. There's no, there's no way that a National Commissioner or a Provincial Commissioner can be dismissed can be declared unfit, unfit for the job and be sacked, as it were, unless a board of inquiry is appointed. That's a procedure laid down in, in the Peace Act. It's actually for the protection of, of, of provincial commissioners and, and, and national commissioners. So we had to make that recommendation. We couldn't just on our own recommend that, that these two persons be dismissed because that would have been contrary to the provision of the Act. All right, uh, so thank you for clarifying that. I wanted to get back to the individual uh, police officers. You said it was very hard to know exactly what happened. There, there has been subsequent writings, uh, Greg Marinovich, uh, looking at the evidence that some of the striking miners were shot at, at close range uh, in other scenes, execution style. Is it fair enough to say there are policemen with blood on their hands? It's still just a matter of, of finding out who to prosecute. Yes, that, that, that is correct. But I must tell you that the, we were aware of what Mr. Marinovich had written on the matter. Um, we were unable to find on the evidence that there was execution, there were execution-style killings. If, if the firearms had been fired fairly close to the uh, deceased person, you would expected powder marks and so forth uh, on, on the body of the deceased. There was no evidence of, of, of that kind. Um, so we were we were unable. We went into that very carefully and thought about thought about it in, in detail, but we didn't feel there was enough evidence to justify a, a finding that what Mr. Marinovich had, had thought had happened was in fact the case. Mm-hmm. And, and then on police leadership, on police training, uh, this panel of experts did hand over that report, uh, yes. but very, very little, we, we've heard very little since then. As far as you know, could police still be using automatic weapons, R5 rifles, uh, some of the things that you were worried about? I don't, I, I, I don't think so. One of the encouraging things, I must tell you, in the periods since then, is as far as I can make out, when there have been disturbances and riots and so forth, and the public order policing have uh, 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 the public order policing have had to act. There haven't been reports of people having been killed by by R five fire. Um, I, I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I would have expected it to have been reported if it was the case. So it does appear as if that finding which we made uh, was respected. I mean, it was a total disgrace that they ever thought of using. Uh, assault rifles which are designed for use on the battlefield uh, for, for public order policing. And their own experts gave evidence that as soon as he arrived, he, he expressed that view very strongly to, to, to the National Commissioner. We certainly raised it from time to time to, during the Commission. And they said, well, we're, we're waiting for the report from the Commission. We said, yes, but that's going to take some time. So an incident of this kind can happen tomorrow. So it should stop immediately. Yeah. But uh, the Certainly, it appears to have stopped after our report was handed over. 
All right, so, so that's about the rifles. Uh, one of the very controversial findings was around our now president, Cyril Ramaphosa. Uh, do you regret at all exonerating him? That's, that's where the criticism has come from? Yes, no, I, don't, no, I don't regret that. Um, what I found interesting about that criticism was that nobody has said where we went wrong. You know, people don't seem to understand. I'm sure many people do understand, but a lot of people don't seem to understand. And when a commission makes findings, it's got to go on the evidence. It's got to be able to justify its findings on the evidence that was led. Now, if you, if you look at our report, you'll see every single finding we made is accompanied by a footnote, and in the footnote is set out the passages in the record which, where, where the evidence was given upon which the finding is based. Now, in the case of Mr. Ramaphosa, the, there's a whole chapter devoted to Mr. Ramaphosa. All the evidence that was led that was relevant is set out. The, the evidence has been analysed. Um, it's firstly found that the evidence he gave was truthful. That uh, he gave his evidence very well, I must tell you. Um, his evidence was supported in, most, in many respects by contemporaneous emails which he sent to his colleagues on the board of, of, of London. So we were unable to find that his evidence was, was false. So he had, his, evidence, his case then had to be, be considered on the basis of, of the facts that we found, and the, which was substantially based on the evidence he gave. Now, the position was this, that he complained against him is based essentially on two conversations he had. One with the Minister of Peace on the Sunday evening, after the two security guards had, had, had been murdered, when the police, despite the fact that they had been warned that trouble was likely and they'd actually drawn up a plan to deal with it, had done nothing to implement the plan. And so there was great dissatisfaction on the part of, of both NUM, the, which was then the majority trade union, and Lonman, uh, the police lack of any action on, on the Sunday. Um, and both Mr. Ramaphosa, as a director of London, was asked by his, his colleagues on the board of London, and the head of, the, of NUM, um, who, who was asked by, by, his, by his people in NUM to speak to the minister and tell him that please, some action is required, bring, drawing to, their attention, to his attention what had happened. So that was the phone call that was made, Mr. And Rapoza explained, he simply told the minister what had happened, he told the minister that the peace hadn't been there, and he thought that the minister should look into it. That evidence was supported by, by the minister in his evidence. Then after that, there was an exchange between Mr. Ramaphosa and his colleagues in which, uh, about the ongoing situation, and Mr. Ramaphosa used the expression that what was happening was dastardly criminal conduct and that required concomitant action. Now, these were remarks that he made to his own colleagues on, 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 on the board of London. What, was, what he said was, of course, correct. There was dastardly criminal conduct. People were murdered because they were refusing to participate in, in the strike. Um, okay. it, was, it was an unprotected strike. Um, and the, some of the strikers, I'm not suggesting all the strikers were, but some of the strikers on, on, on our findings were endeavoring to enforce the strike by violence and intimidation. Okay. And what they did was amounted to serious criminal offences. Not only were the security guards murdered, on, on the Sunday, but two workers who went to work, one on the Sunday evening and one on the early hours of Monday morning, were murdered as well. And that was clearly criminal conduct of very serious nature. All right. The concomitant action simply means appropriate action. And when he was asked what he meant by that, he said well, he, he, what he meant was the police must do what they're supposed to do to, to stop crime. Yeah. Um, when he spoke to he then spoke to Mr. Ch to Mr. Bungu, the Minister of Mineral Resources, on the Wednesday afternoon, and said, "Please get a message through to the minister that the uh, the, the police must act in a more pointed fashion." That was the ex expression that he used. That evidence was confirmed. Uh, what then appeared was that the Minister of Mineral Resources never conveyed that to, to the Minister of Peace anyway. The Minister of Peace was apparently in Kwazulu in, Natal in, in the selected peace station. He produced his telephone records and he gave evidence. Again, there was no basis for rejecting his evidence on this point, but he never received that message. So there was any event, no causal connection between what Mr. Ramaphosa said to Minister Shibangu 
and, and, and the shooting, which took place the following day. And there was right. surrounding evidence as well that he had no idea that that would happen. Yeah. And he certainly had no idea to realize, to, no, no reason to believe that the police would launch such a, a, an ill-directed and totally rec reckless and, and, and unacceptable operation as they did. All right, uh, Judge, we appreciate your time uh, tonight on the anniversary and for that uh, thorough um, uh, explanation that was retired Judge Ian Farlam uh, saying he doesn't uh, regret at all exonerating the now president. He was the chairperson of the Commission of Inquiry looking into Marikana. Okay, let's uh, take a look at your weather.